and then just go along and melt it all together as soon as I find my helmet. Alright, so back in the shed quarters, I found a piece of punch metal, so we're going to make the tray for the drop saw. Now this is stainless, it's going to have a stainless edge all the way around it, about 40 mils high and a little edge off of that for the to sit into the box. Now this is meant to catch all the all the chips from the saw blade and then all the cutting fluid falls through into the catch tray. Now, so I'm going to start off with the aluminium box because that'll give me the overall size and then I'll make the tray to suit. So this is an old toolbox lid had a bit of damage so it, it's basically the biggest piece of aluminium I have. So I'm going to mark it out, cut it out, fold it up and then get in tiggy with it and then switch over and make the box to drop inside so just enjoy it please.
I've made this, it's exactly the right width, that's what I need, and exactly the right length. That's why I had to cut a little bit extra off, is because I made it longer than I needed. So I could start from one end, mark the first bend, put him in, then mark from the outside here, the front of the box, all the way back, take off, well I had to take off 5 millimeters because of the radius on the front of the bender, and the 3 millimeters of the thickness of the sheet. So then this is exactly 400 long. Now, that's a trick when you're folding is you've got to take off the thickness of the sheet because it will grow that distance. Anyway, it's 400 long, 280 wide. So it's exactly the right size. So these panels so I've cut, they actually fit on the inside. So I've taken the corners out for the radius. I've just got to clean these up with some thinners before I weld it and then weld the whole thing together. Now, I brought the TIG back from the new workshop because, well, there's, it's not set up over there yet and I needed to do a couple of jobs here first. So, I'll clean this and then start welding. swap the machine over to go to pulse. Now because of the way I've actually buttered these up there's no V in there so the pulse will just melt this outside edge into this piece so I've just got to put the heat more this direction to actually melt this piece more than this one and use the edge of this as the filler. And when I do that I've got a tack rod on the corner but I'll put a second tack in about 25 mil so that when I actually start the weld, if there's any tension in this section, as soon as you start, without that extra tack, that can just spring open. And then you've got to stop, reset it, put tacks in and start again. So now I'm just going to go and pulse all this up and then clean up the top edge. I made a bucket. So the machine is set to 1.5 pulses per second, uh, it's about 200 amps on the machine but I'm using the foot pedal to control it. Now as I said I'm going to be angling the torch more down so that it's sending the heat into this piece more than this piece. Because I'm trying to melt 3 millimeters out of this piece but 6 millimeters out of here. So the top 3 mil will just end up as the filler. So I don't need to have a bit of filler rod there. For this sort of application, it works great. I don't know if it's the right way of doing it, it's just something that I found works. Now when I finished I will get a filler rod and I'll just fill a little bit around the corners. That will work just fine for this. I'm going to keep going.
one side done. Now, when I do this sort of thing, I like to mirror the direction of weld on both sides so that any tension that's pulled into this side while the weld cools, it will equalize with the same on this side. Well, that's the theory anyway. One bucket. using the water cooler at the moment so well it starts off nice and then just gets hotter and hotter until it's messy that's because the head of the welder gets hotter and well yeah it's not great that's why I built a water cooler but it's just kind of packed up over there at the moment anyway I'll just fill these corners and then the bucket will be done. Alrighty, the top edge will need a linish up, along with the edges of the handle here, but that's the bucket done. So, put that aside. Got my piece of stainless. Need to put an edge around that and then some little tags coming off to sit on the top edge of this and that'll be job done. I might actually shorten this a little bit more because I need some space at the back edge for the hose to come into the box so I'll probably just take another 10 mil off this and that should be good.
ready to fold her anymore. So I took them, put cup, fold it out. Just like with the aluminium, you really should clean everything you're ever going to TIG. And then take the cleaners and put them away somewhere. Alright, so I've changed the tungsten over now and I've swapped it to DC. It's on about 100 amps, still on the foot pedal. So I'm just going to start by tacking it in the corners, getting everything right, and then just go along and melt it all together. As soon as I find my helmet. Alright, so that all fits. I do have to clean up the box a little bit more, but that should be pretty good to get the saw going. So I've got a gap at the back here to fit the hose in. I'll put a mesh filter over the end of that as well. And well, now we can start chopping steel. Pretty fancy for what it is. Basically a bucket. But that's the good thing about being able to TIG weld, is you can make mundane items fancy. For instance, yeah, that's a rabbit litter tray. Of course, I've got a killer bunny guarding the throne room. Anyway, that's it for this video. As always, customize everything. Yeah!